Jesus. 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 All right, let's try it over from the top. All right. One's been tough here. It was made on Monday. I'll get that in a minute. You said you wanted it to be flat. <laughs> okay, let's try that right on screen. Go ahead. <laughs> saved, how you realized that the Holy Spirit had moved inside. Well, I just praise God that it did. And it's been wonderful. How'd you know that it did? Well, I had a different feeling than I'd ever had before. And what I was kind just of so joyful and uh, praising the Lord. Anyone else? Sister Kelly? I didn't do bad things anymore. Didn't do bad oh. things anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, can you back up? <laughs> Oh, no, that's wonderful. <laughs> Anyone else? An experience then with the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Trinity. Uh, some people don't like that word experience in the Baptist church, but it's an experience. Amen, it is. It's an experience. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm not talking about lightning striking or nothing like that, but you know when you moved inside. Amen. Uh, it's a whole different set of desires. Yeah, Brother Dave went from running the back hole to a bulldozer. <laughs> <laughs> he let me in on something. He said he wasn't going to buy a big Christmas list or he didn't want big Christmas stuff for him. And he said he's going to get some things for March. And I said, that's because your list is so expensive. I mean, it, it's expensive to buy a bulldozer. <laughs> All he wants is a bulldozer for Christmas. <laughs> Amen. Like I'm going to get him to smile. Yeah, I just like to have a for a while. Amen. I'm going to get him a sleeping bull. 
Yeah, a sleeping bull. That's a bulldozer. A sleeping bull. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not your family I got that. Sleeping bull. Bulldozer. We ask the Lord to bless our Sunday school class. We'll do what we can. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, brother. Yeah, you know, Father Lord, thank you for this day, Lord. Um, I hope that you bless all our Sunday school teachers with the message that they provide, Lord. I pray that um, for everybody on the prayer list, Lord, and I pray for Destiny that she's fighting over, Lord. And, yes, I, and I just pray that um, today goes how, how you pray, Lord, this and Amen. 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 How many of you have ever read the book of Joshua? I'm going to make a few comments and I'm going to move along. I'm going to make a few comments about the book of Joshua. I'm going to start. I'm going to use a couple of verses that you might not think about having such an effect on the book of Joshua. I wrote it down. I don't know what people think when they read the book of Joshua. Just what they think about that book. I mean, that thing bloody from one end to the other. It ain't nothing but killing, 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 and more killing. I mean, that land was being overtaken, but why? See, that you got to ask that question. I had one lady said to me about that. Um, hey, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like just about a half a cup of that coffee back there. I sure appreciate it. Um, one lady said, well, now... All most people know about Joshua is the Battle of Jericho. And I thought, well, no, no, that's true. She said, there's so many other wonderful things in it. <laughs> there, are, there are wonderful things in it. But it is a bloodbath. That is nothing but a bloodbath from one end of that thing to the other. And then they split up the land. They split up the kind of like you'd call them states and counties. you call them like counties. It'd be like counties. Then they split up the cities between the 12 tribes, and they didn't get all of it, Brother Danny. They got a lot of it. Oh, Caleb. Caleb came up there right in the middle of all that when they were splitting up, thank you, dear, splitting up the land, and each tribe was getting so much. And uh, Caleb came up there and told Joshua, J Caleb hadn't gotten a bit older in his 35, 40 years. He was strong as a bull. And he said, if you'll, he, said, he told Joshua, uh, he told Joshua, he said, if you'll let me, he, there were anacoms. Do you know what anacoms are in the Bible? I have no idea. Anacoms are giants. They're, they're off the bloodline, or Goliath would have been off the bloodline of those things later in history, in Jewish history. Anacoms, and they had a mountain. And uh, Caleb said, if you give me permission, you know, as the leader of Israel, he said, I'll go up there and get them out of there. And he went up there and he got them out of there. <laughs> took over this whole mountain range. He was a tough dude. But it's nothing but killing and killing and killing. And I wonder, now, you, I mean, you can spiritualize a lot of things, but how on earth are some of the, uh, let's say, sacramental communions, how are they going to spiritualize that? I mean, it's nothing but blood and guts. Nearly the whole book. They take the sword, man, they kill everything in sight, including the animals, except in some cases they got to keep the cattle. Meaning, cattle in the Bible is different than we think of cattle, like in Texas. Cattle in the Bible is goats, sheep, and cows, and stuff like that, but it's all of the cattle. That's the way the Bible defines it. All right, look with me at uh, Numbers. Let's see here. No, not numbers. I want to see you 28. I want to see you 28. I want to show you the attitude of this dude. I want to show you why it's so bloody in Joshua. Then we'll move on to another bit of our lesson. And I thought, what do people, how are they going to spiritualize that? I mean, it's verse after verse after verse after verse. It even gives the count of all the cities and that they overtook. I mean, it was just, whew. the Hittites were bad dudes, too. Uh, they ended up with one little group, one little group of Hittites yielded to them, and they let them live. One little group. I think that's interesting in light of the fact that there are several little groups that claim 
nationality in national Israel today? Well, they're correct. Some of them. Some of them are correct. They are from national Israel in their, that's what Joshua left over to the people. But the Hittites were bad. I saw a picture of one of the swords that they used. And they were big, long things like this. I mean, big, long swords, heavy, broad blade. But now God, as he often does, he gave the Jewish people higher technology. He gave them swords all night, but they're only about this long. And they, they came down and they squared off at the end, and they came, I wish I had brought a picture, but they're squared off at the end, and it's more like a, what's those things you chop meat with? A meat cleaver. That's what it looked like, a meat cleaver. And they'd go in there. When they go into battle, of course, God was with them. Sometimes he would use hailstones just to kill people for the Jewish people. Blood. I want you to get the idea. I don't want you to miss what's in Joshua, this little spiritual nugget that they're looking for. Blood and guts. <laughs> okay. Why? Why did God do that? Well, Ezekiel 28. The Ezekiel 28. It's going to have to do with the devil. Uh, verse 12, he says, The Son of Man take up lamentations upon the king of Tyrus. He's just a type of the devil. And it pans out in the text. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Thou sealest up the Son, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Well, that was the way Lucifer was created. He was created that way. He was the most beautiful, but it's remained a creation. You've got to keep that in mind. He was the most beautiful creation of God. The top, most beautiful creation of God. He could sing, he had, he had, well, let's just read. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. That's very obvious from the story of Adam and Eve. And he was there before. Lucifer was there before Adam and Eve were there. Now that takes a little <coughs> cross-referencing. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, and the sapphire. Some of you ladies, isn't that a beautiful thing there? The onyx and the jasper and the sapphire. Jaspers, I believe, are red, bright red, like a ruby. Am I right? Emeralds are beautiful green. I mean, these precious stones were, uh, they still are a big thing. Uh, just like diamonds, except some of them even more expensive than diamonds. And emerald, carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tablets. See, tablets, that's a musical portion of this dude. He would lead the singing in heaven. He was the song leader in heaven, Lucifer. And he did it for, for no telling how many, what we would consider millions of years, there's no time in heaven, but no telling how long, no telling how long he'd been doing this. I mean, millennia, millennia, he'd been, you know, something happened. And thy pipes was prepared in thee the day that thou was created. Now remember, I'm getting to Joshua. I'm going to show you why that's such a bloody mess. Makes George Patton look old blood and guts, they called him during World War II. Makes him look like a choir boy. He was pretty bloody, but he was not, he wouldn't even fit under the arm of a Joshua. No way on this earth. Joshua was one bad dude. Now the saving grace of George Patton was that he used the Bible for his battle plans. That's why he was so good. The Germans feared him. They figured that he was the number one general in America, and it worked. It worked to get him away from uh, some of the positions because they would send Patton in there thinking, and the Germans, they knew the Germans thought he was the main general, but he wasn't. Eisenhower was, see. Anyway, thou art the anointed cherub. Now, cherub is not an angel. A cherub, there are five cherubs that sit around the throne of God. Five. They're winged. You can see them in the first two, three chapters of Ezekiel. They're winged. Angels do not have wings in the Bible. Cherubs do. And seraphim do. If they're plural, it's cherubim. If it's plural seraph, seraphs, or plural seraph would be seraphim. So those had um, wings. All right, thou art the, but this is a special one. This is, 
the anointed cherub. It was reptilian in nature. Uh, he was reptilian in nature as a cherub. If you'll notice in Ezekiel, it, it shows the different species, types of cherub that there are, and there's one always missing. It's the reptilian class. When you get over to Revelation, you'll find those cherubs again that you see in Ezekiel chapter 1, but there's one missing. There's one whole genus of species missing. That's the reptilian class. <coughs> what did Satan show up as in the garden? Snake. A snake. So before he went crawling on his belly, and there's other places you can find this in the Bible, he had hoods. He was a serpent that had hoods connected with oxen. And before he was, the Lord said, you're going to crawl on your belly. That's what he looked like. He had horns. He did have horns. Kind of a mixture of oxen and reptilian class. All right? Now, y'all, the only way y'all prove that to yourselves, look up the verses. <laughs> Just look what's missing, number one. Uh, thou art the anointed chair that covers, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Now it's getting very obvious that this isn't just King of Tyrus. He's using it like, do you remember when the Lord came down from the Mount of Transfiguration and Peter was tempting him not to go to Jerusalem for the things to happen that would happen, his crucifixion and everything. And he looked over at Peter and he said, get thou behind me, Satan. Same type deal. Same type deal. This guy here is just a type. This guy Tyrus was just a type of the devil. The things that the Lord wanted to explain here about Lucifer. Thou wast perfect in thy ways. Now listen. God did not cause this. God did not cause this. Um, he allowed it to happen. And some people say, well, why did God bring evil in the world? He did not bring evil in the world. He did not. This was Satan's problem. This was Lucifer's problem. And he had done his job for millennia and he never had a problem out of him. All right? So, but he chose to rebel against God. <coughs> None of God's creatures are without a choice. You have a choice. You have a choice how you're going to live today, what you're going to eat today, what you're going to do today. Well, Lucifer had a choice. And somewhere along there, somewhere along there, he made the wrong choice. Obviously, it caused all kinds of ramifications in heaven. Remember, I'm forgetting with Joshua. It caused all kinds of problems in heaven. One third of the angels followed him. It caused really super problems on this earth. Okay? Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. So it was in him. It wasn't in God. God didn't give it to him. He, he, he thought the stuff up in his own imagination. Okay, um, the Bible says in verse 17, thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom. See, it's all what Lucifer did. God did not do this. Lucifer did this. Lucifer brought evil into this world. He brought evil into heaven. He started, as soon as he got this thing started, he started recruiting the angels. He got a bunch of them to follow him. It's a big problem. It's still a big problem in heaven. It's part of you're part of that solution to that problem. In heaven, God will use the body of Christ to replace these thrones that will be cast down uh, during the tribulation <coughs> period of those beings that are in them right now. That's why there's so much trouble in the universe. There's so much trouble because those beings are in there. Heaven is a very real place. And it's real easily documented with the Bible that there are levels of heaven. At each level, there's different rulers, okay? A government in heaven is what I'm trying to say. It, it, just the stupid governments we've got on the earth, yeah, well, some of them aren't so stupid. Look how many people the Chinese have killed. Well, they're godless situation. They're godless. Um, if they'd have been in the land of Canaan during Joshua, guess what? Heads off, them guys are gone. Why? Godless. Godless. I'm getting to the point. Because of thy beauty, thou hast corrupted thy wisdom. By reason of thy brightness, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold. He's talking about as the manifested antichrist. Because there's three parts to 
Lucifer, the, the anti-God. There's the anti-God, the anti-Christ, and the anti-unclean spirit. So here he goes to talking about his manifestation as a man. He says, I will cast thee to the ground. That'll happen about the midpoint of the tribulation, according to Revelation chapter 13. Chapter 12, I'm sorry, chapter 12. I will cast thee to the ground, I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast to bow thy sanctuary, he's talking about the heavenly and the earthly here, by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. That's why it's not good to gossip. He said about gossiping in heaven. He, I'm whispering against God in heaven. Will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee? It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in sight of all them that behold thee. Now, he also said in another place, I will be like the Most High. Look at Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. See, to get to some of the questions, some of these folks, they see that stuff in Joshua, and they say, my God, God's, the God of the Bible is a bloody God. Let's just see how bloody he is. Isaiah 14. Look at verse, uh, let's get him in context in verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground that did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I, this is very important to understand in Joshua, <clears throat> I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north, so heaven is north. That is true. Heaven is north of this earth. Due north, not polar north. Po uh, the north star, north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like. <coughs> Notice that? What they call that in English class? Similar. I will be like, like the most high. Okay, now we're going to go over to Genesis. I want to show you something about the Most High God that caused Genesis. God in Genesis 14. I'm going to show you the identification that Melchizedek gives of the Lord God Almighty and what it is that he possesses. And I've talked before about how God is using Israel in the earth to stop Satan's plan. Well, that started a long time ago. It started in earnest, actually, uh, if you wanted to get real particular, when the nation of Israel came out of Egypt, because they weren't a nation until then. They had to develop an army to become a nation, and they came out of there. Well, you know what happened. They wandered around in the desert. They didn't go into the promised land. So it's going to take a Joshua to go into the promised land and do all the damage that God had already decided is going to be done to stop Lucifer from running this earth. you got to know something about those people that they kill. Now, Lord, the Lord God set his faith, if you will, his religion in this earth. He gave the law of Moses, and he had the children of Israel to agree to it, right? All right as far as God is concerned, <coughs> that's it. He's, got, he's in the business of stopping this encroachment of Satan in the universe. It's real. Therefore, when you're going to talk about Israel, it's going to be in physical terms. It's not going to be in, in spiritual terms. Ours is in spiritual terms. It's the, our swords of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down the strong. We fight with word of God. It's a spiritual thing. But to them, the sword was spiritual. Okay? Fighting the same fight against Lucifer because Lucifer said, I will be like the most high. Well, what does that mean? Um, Genesis 14. This is when Abraham went down there to get Lot out of Dutch. That's what my mom would say, get him out of Dutch. I never have learned what that meant. You know what it means, Ken? Get him out of Dutch? I know it's out of trouble, but I wonder where that say started from. Miss Connie, do you know? Something like getting out of the Dutch oven. I guess so. Maybe that's it. Get out of the Dutch oven because it got heated around there. 
And Melchizedek, king of Salem, now this, this is one of the greatest types of Jesus in the Old Testament. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was a priest of who? The Most High God. Now you're going to learn something right here in this next verse about the Most High God. And he blessed him. So Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said, or Abram at this time, blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor, notice that, that's his title, that's who he is, possessor of heaven and earth. All right? As this thing develops, he comes along with the children of Israel with the true faith of the Old Testament. Judaism, temple worshiping, Look at all of the blood that shed inside that tabernacle and temple. The blood of millions of bulls and goats. All of those things figure to what's coming in the future, of course. The Lamb of God himself is Jesus when he dies on the cross and sheds his blood. The fight of God against Satan in this world is a bloody fight. All right, now, now we go to Joshua. Just turn over there. Obviously, I can't read the whole book to you, but nearly every page. And he said, tells them and keeps telling them, be strong and a good courage. Um, go, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Phyllis, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. Joshua uh, Moses told Joshua, he said, Joshua, be strong, be courageous. You just do what God said do. They only got found up one time. They got found up one time because Achan got to messing. Listen now. It's important. Achan got to messing with the gods of that land. Where we're going to look. That's the way that Satan, Lucifer, was using to usurp the authority of God on earth. He does it in religious realms. Okay? Now those people, every one of those people that were killed by Joshua were worshiping God that was actually worshiping the God of this world, Lucifer. Okay? So to break that stronghold off of at least the land of Israel in the beginning, God told Joshua to kill all those people. Men, women, children, horses, cattle. There were sometimes the horses. They would take the horses, and I'm, I'm sure Peter would have a fit. They'd take the horses and they'd stick a spear in under their main leader of their back foot. It's called coughing. The ruin. No good for anything. God didn't even want them using their horses. What's the point? Lucifer has said, folks, that he will be like the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. This is serious business we're in down here. One day, you will draw your last breath due to this factor. The one that caused this mess is Lucifer, not God. Amen. Now I'm telling you, he got together with Adam, and Adam and Eve agreed, and <coughs> next thing you know, people start dying. Because the factor of God overcoming Satan in the known universe is the number one theme of the Bible. It's not the second. The kingdom of whether it be a kingdom physical on this earth or a spiritual kingdom in the heavens, whichever one, doesn't matter. The kingdom is that important to God. Who is going to be king of the universe? That's what this whole thing is about. It will help you when you're, when you're reading your Bible and you get in Joshua. Let's see. Let me go back over here to Joshua. It's one I always quote, Brother Daniel. Is it Joshua 1.9? Then they'll talk about Jericho, and then that's about it. He said, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Joshua even saw a pre-incarnate a representation, angel of Jesus Christ. He saw the captain of the host. And he told him, he said, Don't be afraid. He said, I'm with you. What was God doing? When he was having all of these people, men, women, children, animals, killed, he's cleansing the earth of the effect of Lucifer 
Every single one of those people had false gods. That's why Achan got in such trouble. Whenever Joshua found out he had stolen some land, he stole some Babylonian garment, and he had stole some gold and silver from the people that they were uh, conquering, and Joshua caught him at it, killed him, his whole family, all his animals, everything. God is serious about this stuff. Now man, you know, he's, man is the thickest critter. He's so thick. Man's just thick. They, uh, to actually, why, what do those people think that read Joshua? And they see all this killing. They think God's just naturally a hateful person. No. The one that's hateful is the religions of those people that would take a baby and throw it in a fire and sacrifice it to Molech. The ones that are cruel are those pagan nations that would take little fresh-born babies, smother them, and shove them down into a clay pot and then build a building and put those little babies. God's never been for abortion. He never will be for abortion. You mistreat those babies, you're in trouble. Amen. Now, you can get it forgiven. You can get it forgiven. Now, but I'm talking about general. I'm talking about the attitude. I'm not talking about individual people. I'm talking about the attitude of our government. This government's on its way down unless something changes dramatically. You'll see the time when we'll probably have to run down to Brother Danny's house just to be in a safe haven. I'm serious. Or Brother Dave's. That's very possible in this day and time. Don't take me wrong, folks. I, I know young girls make mistakes. I, I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about the attitude, Eric, of the government. It's wrong. And it leads people into these wrong decisions. Well, you, you, you go back, you step back a few thousand years and you got Joshua. God had brought the children of Israel. Just get the picture now. Satan had said, I'm going to be like the most high God. <clears throat> All right. What Joshua did was say, writing big bloody letters, no, you won't run this universe, Lucifer. That's what he was saying with those swords. We say, no, you won't every time we preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. We can't let people around in this town run around and start raping our women and mistreating people. What do you think would happen if there wasn't faith in this place? What do you think would happen? The biggest bulldozers would come into your house, break your neck, and do have their way with your wives, and then probably kill them on top of it. That's the kind of stuff that was going on in the land when God told Joshua, go in there and take that land. But just like it got before Noah. Y'all remember that? I mean, it was pretty bad stuff. So I just want our little group to know Joshua was one of the greatest men of God to ever live. And God blessed him in his cleansing of that land of those pagan religions that were killing babies like they weren't nothing. It wasn't just that. It was the way they treated their women, the same thing. Any kind of paganistic thing, any kind of paganistic horror that you can think of, that's what was going on in that land. Anything that burn people, grown people alive, not just babies. They grown burn people. They burn grown people alive, sacrifice them to their gods. Young girls, teenage girls, virgins. Have y'all heard some of this stuff before? It's in a lot of the mythology. We were discussing that was a good discussion we was having that day on how much, how much of the stuff before Noah or during that time actually leaked over into the mythologies of the world. That's a good that's a good observation and probably very, very true. All right, so you see you've got all of this, this the land is just filled and full of the devil. Look what happened. Let me give you just a little bit. It's a little bit different, but uh, they know who God is too, by the way. Rahab, Rahab the harlot there in Jericho, when they started in there, she said, we know who you are. The people, the men wouldn't even fight against them. The men of Jericho, 
They laid down their arms at many instances. But they were stone cold afraid of national Israel because of what God did at the Red Sea. And uh, she came, hang on, like in this paraphrase. <laughs> But uh, she, she did what God wanted her to do. She's mentioned in the Lord's lineage, by the way. Ends up there. And that amazing. I'll, I'll teach about that one of these days. Boy, those women over there. Rahab the harlot connected genetically with the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder what some of our fair-haired brethren think about that one. <laughs> But what'd she do? She went with God's plan. God's plan. And we, and we talk about it all the time. God's plan by use, it's a twofold plan. God's plan for heaven and earth <coughs> is to drive Lucifer from the entire thing. Lucifer will not win. Amen. But the struggles you feel in your life, I want you to know, are coming from this factor that's in the Bible. Whatever the struggle is. Why would Lucifer want you to be a happy, healthy Christian person? You can tell people the gospel. It, it don't even have to go any further than that. But then some of you, Lord willing, after this morning, Lord willing, you'll be able to teach this whole chart. I have a very special service here in just a little bit. Very special service. Amen, Brother Ronnie. Brother Ronnie, it seems weird, but he's inside that little camera. <laughs> Hi, Ronnie. <laughs> uh, and family. But that's, that's what caused the land, the promised land, to flow with blood like it did. It wasn't just something God just thought up all of a sudden, we're going to kill everybody. And it wasn't, it was, it was, had everything to do with the real faith toward the living and almighty God. Remember what it said back in there in Genesis 14? God of heaven, possessor of heaven and earth. Now that gives you, what that little lesson right there gives you is an understanding of God that he's very fair, very fair, an understanding of Lucifer who is very unfair and causes sin and death. Okay? And maybe even a renewed interest in who you are. A better understanding of who you are and your role in this. You see, when you get saved, you're part of God's two-fold plan. Every time, I know it's hard to visualize this, but every time you tell somebody the gospel, what instrument are you using? The Word of God. Look at uh, Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4. You think it in the bloody process? It's bloody, but it's just on a spiritual plane. And we're winning. There are people that are getting saved. And you folks are getting discipled in the Word of God this very morning. You're learning things about the greatest book that's ever written. Hebrews 4. I want you to look at this. You think that it's not warfare, it's warfare. It's just a weapon for our warfare, not carnal. But they are bloody. They are bloody. Every time you take it to somebody, you take the gospel of Jesus Christ, what do you have to mention? What do you have to mention? You gotta mention the cross. What what was all over that cross? Blood. Okay? Now the instrument that we use and that we have faith in to, to do what it is our part while we're here on earth. We've got a large thing to do in heaven, but our part while we do here on earth, we use the sword of the spirit is known in Ephesians 5 to fight this battle. And here's what how sharp it is. And here's how bloody the thing is. Ephesians 4 and verse 12. For the word of God don't put any, listen, listen. Some of you have got sweetest little personalities in different ways. You can reach a lot of people with just your personality, but that won't get the job done. That won't get the job. We can be nice, we can be considerate, we can be kind, 
that won't get a person to Calvary. That won't get them there. We're to use the weapons that God has given us to use in, the, in a different manner, but the same result as Joshua used. Now listen to me. If you get to where you get good with this sword, there will be less false religion in the Arkansas. Amen. Do you know how it hurts? I mean, it absolutely hurts me anymore to hear these guys misquoting these scriptures and tearing this Bible all to pieces. And some of them, even some of them, has a little bit about salvation by grace. But they use Paul like a, for their point. They don't use him to listen to him as the apostle of the Gentiles. They'll go over and teach Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, then reach over and grab Paul and bring it back. And the applications are not the same. One is Judaism. One is the church body of Christ. It hurts because I know there are people that are listening to these men. I know there are people week after week. One guy this morning said, my mama said, my mama said, my mama said, okay, I know you love your mother, friend, but your mama needs to read the Bible. Quote the Bible. I'm not saying we're the smartest ones in the world. I'm not saying that. What I am saying, if we can learn what the weapons of our warfare are, and use them, then we can help the Lord in his endeavor to get Lucifer's paws off of these people so ultimately they're going to be in heaven and they can become a member of the body of Jesus Christ. Can't become a member of Israel anymore. That thing's been laid aside till after we're done. But for goodness sake, we need to learn to use what God has given us to use. All of them are mentioned in Ephesians 5. It's a shame we teach them to uh, our preschoolers and kindergartners and elementary, but we don't take any effect from it for our adult selves. The whole armor of God. We're in a battle, just like Joshua was in a battle. Now see the four people that's coming in at 11. They, they never hear me talk like this. Those of you that come to Sunday school, you get to hear the preaching. So I'm going to do the teaching when they get it. I've got to. I don't have any alternative. I might preach a little bit. You know, Brother Dan needs it. He's been being pretty hard on this week. But what I'm saying is, try to make as many of the meetings as you can because you're going to get something. This is the, the point, no pun intended, for the Word of God is quick and powerful. That's your sword. You want to fight a good fight? You want to get right out there and get in the thick with them. Learn how to use this Bible. Even if you make mistakes with it and cut somebody's ear off by accident, it'll be all right. At least you're making an effort. You know? They'll be all right without their ear. <laughs> Spiritually, so to speak. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Sharper than any two-edged sword. They used two-edged swords in Joshua, in the book of Joshua. Killed out everybody in that nation just about. Two-edged swords that we got something even sharper. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. See, we're dealing with people's souls. We're fighting the devil back off of them. It's a bloody fight. And of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And then he promises us, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Notice the first person uh, attribute talking about the scriptures there as if it was God. Do you know how important these scriptures are? We've got, I've got some new things I'm going to start showing tonight. I hate it that some of them's out, but I'm going to have to begin. It's a, it's a curriculum of 16 different things that I'm going to show on film to help us with church history. So youngsters will enjoy it, and I think the oldsters will too. But in one of those lessons is a man named William Tyndall. I may start with William Tyndall tonight. Folks, you just, you've got to learn the history of this thing. You've got to learn what we've got. What keeps the people like myself 
jumping up and down about this King James Bible. There's some things we know, and I want to help you become aware of them. So of the evening, we're going to have movie time. They're 30 minutes long, and they'll teach you church history. I've never been able to find a thing like this. I got it through my daughter-in-law, actually. She, it's part of her school school curriculum. And I saw that, and I said, is that church history? She said, yeah, we're in 30 minutes. I said, man, i got to have that. Never seen it before. And I'm on my group. I've never seen anything like that. In an understandable short format where we can gain an understanding of where this book came from. Do you know how many millions of people died? If you think God's bloody, you better think again about the devil. Remember, before Joshua and them went in there, they were throwing those babies in the fire. Remember that. Our enemy is bloody, but he's bloody for a different reason. The Bible says he's a murderer from the beginning. He kills people and gets them put in hell. That's our enemy. We need to know how we got this book right here. You, you, I can lay it there. It's just a Bible. People say, well, it's just a Bible. I mean, that's more than a Bible. I mean, it's a Bible, all right. But you know how many millions of people are standing under that that would not compromise the Word of God? We'll learn. Hopefully we'll learn. We're going to have that beginning tonight in our Bible study today. Thank y'all. Let's all stand. I got pretty close to being on time. So that's why Joshua was so bloody. The devil's going to try and pay. he's trying to take over the whole McGillis. And he's not going to get it. Joshua said, no, you don't, buddy. <laughs> we say, no, you don't. And say, for my grace, you say through faith. See, it's different. Aren't you glad it's different? I don't know, a big guy like him, he could probably swing one of those. I know he could. One of those little short swords. <laughs> I mean, God meant to clean it up, clean it up fast, Brother Danny. <laughs> I mean, those little swords, I've seen, I'll get you a picture of that. It's, it's interesting. Went from the old long thing, you know, to this little thing. That's the way we need to learn how to use this. Let's pray. Brother Daniel, would you please dismiss us, please, sir? Well, Father, we're just grateful for the time we're learning this morning, Father, and for this service, for the service coming. Father, we just ask that you'll, I just ask a special blessing on each one that's here today, Father, and a very special blessing on the one that's not here for the reason, Father, that whatever it might be, that you'll take care of these things. God direct us through the service coming, Father, we'll give you praise in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Take a little break. There are some more donuts. There's some donuts back there that haven't been eaten. I got a few apple crater. Did you hide your apple crater? Did you get apple crater? Oh, oh. Very good. Man, he does. Yeah, that's what they were saying. And my sister in law did it.